All right. Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Gloria's story in jiu-jitsu, her position in coaching the future generation. Oh, no, 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 I need you like this. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for being part of this video and watching this video. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. Give it a like. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Youth of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu podcast, otherwise known as Yo BJJ. We are here today with a special guest all the way from Las Vegas. I would like to give a warm welcome to Gloria Ruiz Armas. Um, so I'm Gloria Ruiz Armas. I'm 19 years old. I live in Las Vegas. Um, I'm currently a, well, I am a black belt. <laughs> I said I currently am. I am a black belt um, under Hector Vasquez, and I train at Cobrinha Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Las Vegas. Yeah, guys, that's me. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, guys. Yeah. College oh, student as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I'm so excited to to dive, you know, into your story, being a black belt as well as the college life. So, let's 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 cover through what actually got you started in training jujitsu. Jujitsu when I was 11 years old. Um, there was this. Um, gym that was just equipment um and my mom would go work out there but right underneath well next to that gym was a mixed martial art location where they were giving kids classes and my brother was telling my mom he was like oh can we go train there one day and I was like no that's a little too aggressive like it doesn't get my attention mm -hmm. and then my little brother was like let's just try it and like let's see how it goes and I was like okay sounds yeah. good I started training at first I didn't really like it but then I just started liking the, the jujitsu there. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm only 11. So I was pretty excited, yeah. like just supposedly beating up boys. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, as a kid, you just entertain yourself with whatever your parents mm. give you, I guess. Professor Gloria, I want to ask you is how was the feeling getting a black belt? And of course, considering the age that you are being so young, um how was that feeling what emotions what thoughts were going through your mind like I don't know I was just like is is this like like for real like I don't know it was it's just an it's just really hard to explain it's just a lot going through your mind at that moment you're like wow like oh those days of training really paid off you know right. so it's just it's just really difficult to explain I'm so sorry it's yeah. just surreal like you never expect it Yes. Like, because now you're a black belt, that the responsibilities that were there, especially considering that, you know, a young, young black belt in the Jiu-Jitsu community, like, did you feel pressure or that those factors going on in yourself? I am a black belt. I do feel like I have more responsibility in mm -hmm. helping, you, you know, like guiding the the kids, you know, since they are the future generation of our sport and, you know, as well as guiding and helping out the female community in jiu-jitsu as well that we have at our, at our academy. You know, it's just awesome to be able to like help them out and guide them and teach them certain things. So yeah, I do feel now as a black belt, I, I feel like now I just have to lead the example at some point, you know, and at least I hope, you know, inspire them a little when I was a color belt yes I would help out the teach and help teach the kids class but it wasn't like like I wasn't that excited to teach right but now that I am a black belt and I'm a professor I guess mm. I would say yes yes now it's like okay well now my responsibility is to help them mm. improve you know mm. and kids are sponges so they absorb anything mm. that you go ahead and teach them so yeah like a tree for example and so to also talk about like life you know on the mats being a black belt how's life off the mats for you what is your priorities there in your life well as of right now I'm mm -hmm. going to um to get my bachelor's degree in dental hygiene to become a registered dental hygienist so honestly, my day just consists of, um, you know, waking up, uh, go train in the morning when I have the chance to, and then going to school, making sure I attend my classes in person, mm -hmm. 
Um, right now this semester I'm taking anatomy and physiology, chemistry. So it, it's a lot of like um, science courses. So it is time consuming, yes. um, but it's honestly just trying to balance my day off and making, um, making sure that I set my priorities straight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, finished going to school. Sometimes I'm like, okay, let me go home and mm-hmm. let me do my quick duties, like taking shower, mm-hmm. eat, and I go back to the gym in the afternoon to mm-hmm. go teach the kids class and get yeah. another training session. <laughs> when I'm done with that, <laughs> sometimes home. Yeah. I do. <laughs> and wow. I stay up really yeah but, you know what I gotta do to mm-hmm. to be better as a person yeah, it, it, like it, like pursuing um academia or like a course like it, it's it's great that you're you know being able to balance like both of those passions and I've seen you know people be quite successful in doing that and so to ask you as well Professor Gloria is you know as a child you know working towards the black belt can you talk to us about the adversity or the challenges that you've you've received? Because I'm sure there are many, um, you know, if, and it, whatever you feel comfortable in sharing. But ever since I was a kid, I told I I told myself that I wanted to be a black belt. Mm. Obviously, as a kid, you you say those things, you know, but you're a kid. But I was always like set forward with I want to become a black belt. Mm. Um, honestly, while growing up. And while training, I did um, several times, not many, but several times I did get many men I rolled with be like, oh, you're only a girl. Why would you even train? Or, oh, like, why do you see yourself as a black belt? Blah, blah, blah. You know, you you would, I would get those comments and it would be honestly Mm. hurt. But Mm. I mean, I just going through Mm. another thing too um I'm not saying for all Mexicans but myself as a Mexican um I honestly did also get some comments Mm. you know you Mexican culture you have a lot of machismo saying oh Mm. jiu-jitsu is only a manly sport so Mm. a lot of the times um a lot of my relatives would be like oh why are you training jiu-jitsu it's a guy sport Mm-hmm. You should be training mm. gymnastics or something else, and be like, no, I just I like training. I like doing just doing jujitsu overall. But honestly, mm. it's just focusing on yourself and just doing something that you're really passionate about, and just avoiding and just not listening to what other people say. It's that and doubt that people have been inflicting on you, if that makes sense, and it's mm-hmm. um. It's a it's a big theme I think that that many people do face um, that the there's the idea that jiu jitsu because of the contact again or it's a male dominant sport that women shouldn't be training but I think it's quite the opposite you know and um, there's the motto like jiu jitsu for everyone where I think jiu jitsu can be like a vehicle to really better someone's life. Yeah, I'm just really thankful that at the gym where I'm at right now at Cobrinha the environment is amazing I mean I get along with the guys the girls the kids you know people of different ages that I never expected myself to be friends with you know um Mm -hmm. so yeah it's pretty awesome I love it there and yeah like as a 19 year old I never like imagined myself being friends with a mom a Mm jiu-jitsu mom or you know a grandpa from the gym training just because he likes to Mm -hmm. you know like I also I'm really thankful for the for the opportunity that jiu-jitsu gave me to meet people from different countries like you or like you know like I had friends from Japan or from Brazil that I met at competitions Mm -hmm. and it's just the the thing that jiu-jitsu brings us close to each other um so can you talk to us further about the idea of the benefits that you've gained in your personal journey training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Professor Gloria. <laughs> That's so weird. I'm, I'm gonna Sorry, I'm one. so getting used to it. <laughs> Tradition. Well, personally, the, pers- well, the personal benefits I gained from Jiu-Jitsu is like all the friendships I've, I've gained, you know, I've, I've learned so much from different people, mm-hmm. you know, because everyone's different. Like everybody brings a different game mm-hmm. and, you know, and so it's it's truly amazing to 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 be able to 
know that one person's different, but you're still able to connect with them, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, not only that, but it's just jujitsu has brought a lot of like confidence in myself. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like there's so much. <laughs> yeah, that clicking moment. When did you find out that jiu-jitsu was something you're passionate and something that you'll do for the for your life? That's a really difficult question uh, to answer because uh, throughout my jujitsu journey, I did have several times where I didn't like want to quit. Um, mm-hmm. I would say my juvenile year. Mm-hmm. So juvenile year when I was a blue belt, I would I was competing world pans, um, so many other competitions out there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know I had the motivation to you know and the inspiration to be competing. But when I hit purple belt, I was like, is this even for me? Mm. Like, is this, is this for yeah. me? Um, yeah. And I was just constantly asking myself, is this for me? Is this even worth it? Am I even going to get something out of jujitsu? Mm. Um, so yeah, I started, it, it clicked, it clicked me where I wanted to do this as, you know, for coaching and competing, mm-hmm. I guess at at the very end of purple belt and I guess blue belt too man like should I keep on training what should I do but I I do think it takes a lot of like um time for you to analyze what you're you're gonna do gymnastics and it's in the olympics it's quite well established where we see jiu-jitsu isn't up to that stage up to that point so what made you stick with it despite knowing the how new it is compared to other sports it's just the passion i have for jujitsu mm-hmm. honestly it, it was i mean obviously the comments had um part of that doubt but as well as you know when i was in high school sorry mm-hmm. i'm getting off topic but yeah, that's fine. When i was in high school yes. um you know um there were many times where many of my classmates or just parents in general will be like why don't you just do wrestling or why don't you just do volleyball for the scholarships that way you don't have to pay for school and when you go to college and I'll be like no it's just yeah. I'm just really passionate for jujitsu. it's like it gets my attention you know I like the environment that I'm in mm-hmm. like I wouldn't just give up jujitsu like that to get something else mm-hmm. you know you know, getting getting to where you are. So did you ever feel that sense of loneliness at all or? Yeah, at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point I did. I did feel lonely at some point because you have, you know, different people giving you different opinions. And at mm-hmm. that time where people were like, oh, why don't you just do wrestling for a scholarship? I, it came to the point where like, oh, okay, like, do I do this or do I do this? And then you're constantly asking yourself, like, what am I supposed to do? And then for myself as a really emotional person, I, I don't know if per se for you, but you're constantly asking yourself, like, okay, if I choose to do this, like, what are my parents or my family members going to think about it? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're trying to please them as well, but then you're trying yeah. to please yourself as well. So yeah. it's like, okay, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you think like that or you have ever felt like that before yeah. where you're like trying to make the right decision but you're like okay mm-hmm. if I do this like what's gonna happen and what are people gonna think about it mm-hmm. yes I love that you bring that point and yes I relate to that those those uh, specific thoughts and I think we, I'm sure many others are feeling that way because again being like a young adult right we are in that in that uh, developmental stage in our life where we are choosing our careers. And again, like that aspect of making our family proud is quite, I think, prevalent in that stage, right? So we wanna, <laughs> wanna make sure that we choose our choices right. And of course, do, do by our, our parents or our family. Were, was it, were your parents supportive of your decision like, uh, or your family? How was that process like? Yeah, they were totally supportive. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were like, my parents have always been supportive. 
if mm-hmm. I tell them I want to do something, they're like, go ahead. We're always going to support you. And I'm mm-hmm. really thankful for that, you know, mm-hmm. for having support, uh, supportive um, parents. But other than that, um, there's nothing for me to say because my parents have always supported me through thick and thin. Talk to us about, you know, being a woman and being in the jiu-jitsu community. Oh, yeah, I think jujitsu can definitely bring, you know, a, a positive impact, you know, into a woman's life especially for self-defense, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be negative, but our community right now or world right now is not looking pretty good mm-hmm. <laughs> when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, robberies or things like that. So I do mm-hmm. think that it's really important for a female or, or anyone in general, as well as a guy to learn jujitsu, you know, it's a self-defense tool and you never know when you're going to need it. So might as well train, have fun, you know, meet new people and, you know, use it when the time comes for self-defense <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly i think you hit the nail uh you hit the hammer on the nail on that in that point um suggesting that yes it, it, it it's an inclusive community for everyone i think it 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 works to not take away anything from you but only better you because it's through doing jiu-jitsu you really are able to grasp and understand yourself you know through your own body and you know uh yeah the different um aspects of it so one day I was teaching uh you know the fundamentals class with the white belts Mm -hmm. and we're teaching certain positions and I just think it's really cute how like some ladies that were doing class one of my white belts was like wow I never knew I could do this with my body and I was like yeah with (laughs) jujitsu you just never know that certain things you're able to do you know (laughs) like (laughs) you know like some of them never even knew they were flexible and they are <laughs> because they found out through jiu-jitsu so i just i just it's funny it's funny to it's me. so funny yeah <laughs> definitely oh my it's like the, it's just like a never-ending process to the learning you know we, we we find um being uh training in this sport but gloria yeah yeah um mindful of our time uh with you today and so the last question that I'll ask you, Professor Gloria, is if you could share the best piece of advice uh, that you've received to everyone that's listening. This, but it's mm-hmm. been one of the most like inspirational mm-hmm. quotes to me. Yes. Just don't give up. Like if you have a goal or a dream and you set yourself to do that, just don't give up. If it takes years, months, days however long it takes it just don't give up because you're one step closer to meeting to your goal Mm. and your dream or whatever you set yourself to so yeah just don't give up amazing (laughs) wow oh wow what a great way to end off um and professor gloria again a huge thank you for sharing your time and sharing your story and your perspective and your advice with with everyone today i know i learned a lot um, from listening to you so thank you for having me i'm so sorry for like the nonsense i said it's fine no i i love stuttering yeah no it's it's completely fine um i hope that you find yeah yourself being comfortable uh with us and yeah just i think a area safe space um, to share you know a deep uh, conversation <laughs> awesome well with that said everyone that is a wrap for today's episode of the podcast thank you so much for listening if you haven't already please give this video a thumbs up subscribe and comment down below your favorite piece of advice oh and with that said everyone keep smiling keep training hard so here peace bye everyone bye. see you next time <laughs>